I've been watching Ukraine. The developments. I always watch Ukraine. I, 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 Who's I, winning I, the match? Well, I think the uh, Ukrainians are currently winning, but but on the KD side, I, I've seen reports that say the Ukrainians have lost well over hundred thousand men. The the uh, Russians have lost over two hundred thousand men. Um, and uh, I, I don't know if any new weapon systems have showed up or anything. But mostly this week, it just seems like. Uh, oh, I know that there was a storm shadow strike on a barracks that killed like 400 recruits and um, yeah. uh, Russians. Storm Shadow, on that's the, one of our rockets. I've seen cases more like 7 to 1, 8 to 1 in Ukraine's favor, but I don't trust any numbers. I, everything I see is propaganda for one side or the other. I don't know what the yeah. truth is. Um, I find it interesting. Kyle and I like different things. Kyle's really into the weapon systems and how they work and oh, what's yeah. effective and what's not. Um to me, they're usually just an alphabet soup of nonsense that I barely like. It, it's it's not my passion. I like the tactics and the strategy. And lately, Ukraine has been attacking Russia, not Russians in Ukraine, but across the border into Russia. They either, if humans are going to go in, they have like Russian, I guess, civil warish, you know, insurrectionists or whatever that are, are going into Russia and trying to kill Russians. If the Ukrainians are going to do it directly, they don't cross the border with their people, but they cross with their missiles and I don't know what a drone missile guided bomb drone, whatever. And uh, so now they're attacking like deep into Moscow. Russia, hundreds of kilometers in yeah, Moscow. They sent drones into Moscow with no warheads just to send a message. You, do you remember we talked a while ago about that drone that blew up the Russian flag on top of the Kremlin? Mm -hmm. Um but it wasn't really meant to do a ton of damage. They just right next to the flag and blew up to say, I can. It turned out that that was the Ukrainians who did it. It wasn't a false flag. Now they're sending drones and smashing them into apartment buildings with no warheads. Just to say, keep fucking around. You you'll find out. And uh, I, I'm i very much into the tactics. I think that you're all drones. I'm um, sorry. To start over, you, you were coming back. Um, there's mushroom clouds. I I I heard the explosions. Um, I think if they didn't go off, one of the reasons they were hitting those oh. buildings is because they were repelled from the the base that they were all aimed at by by um, electronic warfare systems. Uh, they weren't. I might have been falling for propaganda. I, I heard they were attacking our apartment buildings with no warheads to say I can, but. Uh, they it's, hit those apartment buildings and blew up. I saw like the windows blown out and big explosions. And you can see like video of like, I don't know, explosions and mushroom clouds. You know what I mean? Well, it's the mushroom like, cloud shit, like, yes, you can also see that. But those are military targets. The civilian targets, I thought they intentionally didn't blow up. But maybe I'm a sucker. That's, that's entirely possible. Yeah, I don't think they were going for civilian targets. It's the, the reports that I saw. And again, and nobody probably knows except for whoever launched those drones. Um, they, they made it seem that they were launched at the Russian base where aircraft were. But the um, some sort of electronic warfare system at the base sort of defended it, sent the drone back the other way. Into, and they on the map, it kind of made sense. Oh, okay. That, 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 well, I could like, be misinformed. But I think uh, they're attacking Russia. Know. Two things. One is it's a, a supply line and there's barracks and shit like that. Also, I think they're trying to make Russia defend herself instead of just being all offense. And that is perhaps in preparation for <clears throat> the big counterattack that they want to launch. Yeah. So that they don't have fucking every Russian available on the front lines that they have to deal with instead spread them out and make them defend Russia itself or herself. Yeah. That, that makes tons of sense. Um, yeah. The storm shadow is a, is a, a, a British weapon. missile. It's a Man. thousand pound bomb that uh, has like a couple hundred mile range and it's, it's, uh, it's stealthy. So it's hard to detect. And they've used them a couple times now to hit uh, Russian barracks um, full of troops and both times i've heard that it's three or four hundred died because it seems like they're storing their goddamn explosives in the basement of these barracks as you do yeah yeah i have all my <laughs> explosives under so, the bed uh, like uh, oh, the gosh, info, you if you uh watch the infographics channel on youtube that's the name of the channel they do like animation and they've got no chill <laughs> they're like <laughs> the russians have always been bad but this is just humiliating and the cartoon putin is like ah <laughs> ah! he's like all he's all angry and stuff like like they're really one-sided with it with the coverage like as far as like their point of view um although i guess you know there's only one side committing war crimes against civilians 
because you know there's just that one side and if those um phone intercepts aren't all propaganda if it then then it's just nothing but russian soldiers laughing and joking about murdering civilians like just killing everything they see um in like every radio intercept i ever hear they're, they're just like yeah we just kill them all we kill them all women children i saw a mother shot in front of both of her children they said eliminate the and they've got like I don't know, like slurs for Ukrainians, the fucking Roscovites or whatever they fucking call them. Um, Roscovites? Uh, I don't fucking know. I, I'm I'm reading like Cyrillic oh. and shit. I'm trying to like interpret what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a real uphill battle for yeah. you. Yeah. Just looking just going, at Cyrillic, trying to ascertain yeah. what it could mean. Just come I up wonder and go how. With. So the Donbass region had people who spoke Russian and they say ethnically Russian to my eye, they all look the same, but whatever. And, um, um, there was a, not a majority, but like an almost majority, right? Like MAGA or something, right? Like not, not technically more, but a lot, um, who even wanted to be Russian who, or maybe it's want to be Russian combined with want to be independent. Like, you know, who would voluntarily mm. leave Ukraine. I wonder if they could poll now how that would change. Is it true that they're stealing Ukrainian babies and bringing them into Russian families? Or is that just so evil's twirling mustache that yeah, they're I saying would, I would that. wager that that sounds not true. But um, we don't know. But right? We don't, don't know, know anything. The rape, I would wager that's true. Maybe some I guy mean, whose what? wife was raped by a Russian soldier no longer likes Russia as much as he used to. Just Yeah, there's, there's no way to know. It, yeah. Following it. You either get totally pro NATO Western propaganda or totally mm -hmm. pro Russian, like for Russian propaganda. Like yeah. I don't, I like watch. I listen I'm to like, both. I don't really follow that much. And I'm just like, because I'll see anything about it, and I'm like, I don't, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. What is true typically is the troop movements, like like the the mm -hmm. front line. It's both sides. So you can look at the propaganda and the maps that both sides create, and they tend to line up really well. At worst, mm -hmm. one of them admits ground was taken, you know, 16 hours slower yeah, than the other. Stuff does. like that. Like I bet you can with satellites and whatnot, you can track pretty real. Like they have that map and whatnot. I mean, every time that map I pull that map back up, I'm like, all right, has anything changed? Oh. I don't I cannot tell if anything's changed since the last time, other than like the one city or uh Bakhmut. Yeah. yeah. Ukrainians apparently have taken a couple of blocks of that back. And I'm like, hmm. was that the idea to actually go like Pile of rubble by pile of rubble and take Buck move back. I thought you can do something clever, like surround it and make them all leave voluntarily. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I have no idea. One that, that, is, that seems like too easy. That seems like almost a video game tactic where like, you'd be like, we have you surrounded. And Rush is like, fuck, they got us. Like, like they, they that, know too. During last fall's counteroffensive, it worked like that. That's when I learned about operational surrounding. Like they would just, I don't know why. You know, picture a big you know coastline, but it's mm -hmm. a front line. They pierce into two sides and the middle runs for it. And I'm like, wait a minute, aren't aren't we surrounded too? Like what why is my yeah. surrounding Trump your surrounding? I don't I don't understand. Um, and that operational surrounding is when I, you know, I've got three sides of you and I make you go to the other, and my artillery just bangs you as you try to escape. Mm -hmm. Um, that's operationally surrounding them, because you're not literally surrounding them. But uh anyway, I'm just bad. It, I didn't realize how much I sucked at war tactics and strategy. It, you know, like it, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> I've never played the harpsichord and I'm completely aware I'd be terrible at it. I've mm. never conducted war, but for some reason I thought I'd be half decent. You know, I'm a clever folk. <laughs> and I, It turns <laughs> out, no, I would get my ass kicked. By no, like you, war. you think about like, I used to think that like reading about Alexander the Great, because you would read like, oh, and these tactics he used in the battlefield and 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 surrounding them or using these special formations and, and surprising them. And like my stupid, you know, 19 year old brain or whatever it was when I was reading that for college was like, this stuff isn't even hard. Anybody would like know to do this. And it's like, no, dumbass. Like, like you don't just become a guy who's known for thousands of years as the greatest military tactician <laughs> in history by being like guys the secret is to bring more men like no one <laughs> no one is like that is impressed like it's or like romans cool. i often hear like yeah. oh, oh yeah yeah so they had bigger shields and then they would hold their shields next to each other and it was just impenetrable there was no way to challenge them and i'm like well i could think of that 
I, yeah. I, I don't know why that was hard to replicate. Like the first time you lose to it, they should come back. Like the survivors should be like, all right, turns out using uh, trash can lids as shields, terrible strategy. Let's get yeah. actual shields that are body like, length. The Greek like phalanx was more to like take on like other groups of professional uh, soldiers, right? So like you outreached them, like the okay. other pro army, like wasn't as well trained. The thing that like, like Rome had the best army because they were the only like power at the time that had a standing army. No one else like just had an army all the time. And when Rome wasn't fighting wars, which was rare, or they were giving certain divisions rest, they would have them build roads. And so they were always doing something. And that like Rome was able to beat superior forces sometimes because they could reinforce so much faster because it turns out having roads is enormously beneficial and so you get into a resource battle with the roman empire it's not going to go well you're dr you're trudging stuff through the woods and they have a road system like they also it, had a professional army that was the thing yeah yeah the they professional army very very important oh, yeah. building their roads and everything yeah Rome, roman empire was very neat all that all that uh ancient rome ancient greece so cool so much of our like modern understanding of thought comes from then uh, so long ago Empire building now is interesting. I don't always get it. Like, we'll dump a ton of money into some other country. Now it's Ukraine, but it's been other countries other times. And I'm like, what do we get for this? Oh, no, no. We get like a soft return. They owe us one, like a mobster. Mm -hmm. And we can call in that favor later. I'm like, what favor are we going to call into Ukraine that's worth a quarter trillion? I, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Oh my no, god, it's this, not going to benefit us. This, no, it's not, it doesn't benefit normal Americans. We're so benefited. All right, first of all, American companies are looking great right now. It's American companies that make all that shit that's killing Russians. They're selling. They're, they're, it's gangbusters. The javelins they can't make them fast enough. They want more. They can, the, the supply line can't keep up. It's a bit of a problem because so many of our defense contractors. There's only five now. There's five defense contractors in the United States. There used to be like thirty or forty. They've all mm -hmm. consolidated down be because mostly because during the war against terror, we didn't need this plethora. We didn't need five mm -hmm. different companies making a, a missile system. We needed the missile system to do the thing. They, they didn't need a vast supply of weapons. They didn't really need a supply chain that could produce weaponry for a prolonged um, battle, like a war, like what's happening in Ukraine right now. So it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how the supply line stuff here at home changes, because eventually we, we're going to have to start making enough for us and them, you know. But as far as what it's getting us, oh, my God, Russia, Russia squashed one of our, our greatest one of our greatest opponents in the world looks like shit. Mm -hmm. their army looks like shit their materials look like shit they're not going to be selling nearly as much i was talking the other day about how they were sell they were exporting 11 billion a year in arms and then last year it was like three what do you think it's going to be next year I mean, this year it's going to be nothing and right. then their fuel and their fuel is capped at what 60 a barrel so they're, they're they're not able to to really make those kind of profits from the fuel sector which is their main other export and then all the other sanctions they can't get the circuit boards and the chips <clears throat> the 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 little who's he what's it's that go into advanced electronics to make them go they're mm -hmm. gonna have a hard time making new tanks how are they gonna get new thermal sites for a tank i don't know what goes into making a thermal site but i know when i make Probably one a of the video games it a hard. lot <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 imagine it's enormously difficult and you have to be very smart but moreover i don't know what the 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 long-term thing is going to be i know ukraine wants to be nato proper they want to be under the the united states nuclear umbrella they want to be the the the. They don't want to be some buffer state that that's a half in NATO, half out Warsaw Pact state, and then this quasi fucking. They want to be one of them. They want to be. They want to have the same Article Five protections that Poland has, and that might be a bridge too far. So it's going to be interesting to see how things progress because the war is going to end, and the battle lines probably are going to change much more than they are, in, in my opinion. Who is like, it? Who it wants is? to be full NATO? Ukraine, you said. Yes, yes, of course. Somebody of course. just became it. Was I, I, one of the Sweden? Sweden? Sweden is it? Finland? Maybe Finland. I think Perhaps Sweden Finland. maybe was already one of those lands. Uh, it was just Finland. Yeah, it was it. Um, so Russia's goal of like stopping NATO expansion kind of not working out. Oh, mm -hmm. every look. You don't have to. Sometimes when a politician or a world leader does something, I think. 
they know more than I know, and they're smarter than me, and they got a whole team of guys that are also smarter than me, and all those guys know more than I know. I probably don't see all the sides of this one. This isn't one of those times. I think this guy fucked up. Like, Putin clearly fucked up. He was in a and much not, better position two years ago. So much better position a couple of years ago. He, I, I, I've, I've seen about things about he wanted to take the, uh, Kiev in three days. There was the whole thing with the special forces attack on the airport. Um, 48 hours, put, right? 48 hours special military operation. Is what uh, yeah, 72 was what the war plan uh -oh. said. They had this battle at the airport where um, U.S. intelligence, of course, is the best in the world. So we're like, hey, they're going to land at your airport with special forces at nine. <laughs> and so they're waiting, but they lost anyway. The, the Russian special forces fucking parachuted in, killed all the Ukrainians. More Ukrainians were waiting, though. They had backup Ukrainians. So those went in, killed all the Russians. Then more Russians came to kill all the Ukrainians. And while they were there, they started taking all the bulldozers off the landing strip that were obstructing and keeping the planes full of other Russians from landing. So the planes start landing. They killed all those Russians. They killed all the Russians that came and all the Russians that kept coming until there were no more Russians at the airport. And from there on, it was kind of a fuck because there was no, they weren't going to be able to take the airport. They weren't going to be able to flood um, <clears throat> troops into the city. And they didn't have any sort of supply chain set up because they thought it was a, a three-day war. So there's no reason to have huge chain lines of fuel food stuff like like dude did they eat lunch all right they got a they got their they got a backup meal we're eating in kiev tonight boys what are we talking mm -hmm. about food it's it i mean, mm -hmm. I mean if you're going on a three-day trip you probably don't pack trucks and trucks of munitions and food and this and yeah. that and defensive weapons too so then they got stuck on that fucking highway right that 40 60 kilometer mm -hmm. convoy or whatever it was they had to sit there idling because those big diesel tanks can't just start and stop so they had to idle. They all ran out of fuel. They didn't have the air defense systems turned on at times because they were either out of fuel or leaving them on meant wasting fuel. It's a catch-22. Either way, you're fucked. Mm -hmm. And they just bombed all that shit. Also, cheap drones. the Russian fighters didn't want to fight. So, like, Kyle runs out of fuel, and I'm like, wait a minute. Kyle doesn't have to fight? Suddenly, I'm taking a dagger to my own gas tank, and now I'm out of fuel. I don't have to fight. And that's mm. partly how the Ukrainians got all those fucking tanks because the Russians abandoned them. Either they ran out of fuel naturally or they just repair the gas tank, diesel tank, year, and uh, it was good to go again. A year and a half ago, the United States, um, the Ukrainians were sending um, intelligence officers, spies into Russia proper and into Belarus to, to take a look at the, the buildup of arms that was going on. And the report back said that they they saw troops um, selling fuel and ammunition and explosives for vodka and cigarettes. They said that that was rampant, that the troops there believed they were on an exercise into Belarus. They had no idea they were in Ukraine. They, they, they were just the, many of them. The vast majority of them had no idea they had just invaded another country. They thought they were in neighboring Belarus, their friend mm -hmm. doing a military exercise pretending to invade somewhere and so so no no food no ammo we, I, i've seen so much of their gear mm. that looks shitty again it's probably propaganda i bet they've got gear but it's it's not uh they're not looking like the second best army in the world which is kind of the the talking point that all of ukraine mm. youtube is is going with right now that russia is the second best army in ukraine not mm -hmm. the second best army in the world ah uh, yes it's a good line yeah it is yeah. It's a yeah, fascinating it war. It I out. check. I keep up on it every single day, and um, I, the Ukrainians have proven to be quite clever. Ah, so the rail system beneath Kiev was built during the Cold War, and it is much deeper than a rail system would ever need to be because it's mm -hmm. meant to be a fallout nuclear fallout shelter. Mm -hmm. The the whole of Kiev is like this network of tunnel armored tunnels underneath that the whole population can go into for shelter. And there's even more stuff for the president or the, you know, the guy in charge in Kiev. He's got this crazy bunker network that he can get down into. But um, they, they talked about all of the um, the assassination attempts against Zelensky. And they, it, it just seems like time and time again, uh, American intelligence is, is like just knows, mm -hmm. just knows, just just kn yeah, just always knows and like like. I, I, there's two or three spy movies, I bet, that can be made hmm. about four fuckers that got sent into Kiev to kill that guy. Zelensky's They're in Syria right now. Too. 
Zelensky <laughs> speaks to Congress and they deliver. So I remember early on, right? The Russians are coming. They're taking the airport. The United States offers to evacuate Zelensky. And he's like, what? No, the Russians are coming to me. I don't need a ride. I need some guns. And it was like, it gives me tingles. Like, motherfucker was ready to die for his country. Well, they had seen what had happened. Um, where was it? Where Afghanistan, where as soon as the president, whatever he was, left, so did his sort of like circle. And then the whole government fell without a fight. They, they, like, like they had just seen that as mm -hmm. Zelensky at least had. And the U.S. and everyone else was asking him to leave. But all the, you know what would have happened. The mm -hmm. whole thing would have fallen apart mm -hmm. and he'd have lived in exile somewhere. He'd be over here on Twitter. He'd be on Zelensky yeah. would be on Twitter and, and convincing he'd live in, someone else to fight for him. Yeah. Un, unsuccessfully. Very unsuccessfully. Uh, but instead, he stayed behind and he saved his country. And, and they're, they're going to end up with some sort of peaceful solution that ends up probably like North Korea or something with a DMZ mind the fuck up and missile systems you on think either so? side. You yeah. think it'll like eventually it'll like carve out somewhere where the lines are now I think there'll the be some I DMZ think, I think the line's oh. just about done moving I, I think the line's going to be about where it is right now they keep talking about this spring offensive but man mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know I don't know about all that it just seems to me the Russians have been spending the last year digging trenches and placements pouring concrete and planting mines and, and I don't care how many like fancy US systems you have there's just not a way to brute force your way through that or to expertise your way through it or to smart your way through it without I mean, how do you pop those mines while under artillery fire, right? Like, it's not like they're just going to let you go mm. into their minefields and start slowly sweeping them. You've got, if you're going to make a rapid advance that's a surprise attack, how do you get through minefields like that? And, and all that? I don't know. I don't see that happening. What's your guesstimation? What's your, your professional viewers' assumption on when this will wrap up? Oh, wrap gonna... up? As in, like, like, as in there are new lines drawn, the Donbass is rushing now, and everything else is in NATO or whatever <clears throat> happens. Oh, maybe, maybe next time this year, maybe next time they're going to do another winter. They'll do another winter, uh, for sure. Um, and, uh, and, and we'll see how that goes for either side. If, if it gets into winter and, and it's a situation where Russia's r can't feed and clothe and, and hypothermia is a problem. Like it was this last winter. I saw like five Russians huddle, huddling together. And then when the grenade went off, only one of them moved. They were all hypothermic. Like already. They're already, already dead. Mm. Yeah. Or are dying. Fuck death out there. And I saw so many guys like left in fields and shit. Um, I don't know. We'll see how another winner goes. I don't I know disagree. shit about war. I'm just an armchair YouTube kind of kind of viewer. But don't let that stop you. I know slightly I, less I than Kyle. I refuse it, to. It sounds like I, he's an armchair YouTuber that's more qualified than me. But uh, I think the spring offensive is going to work. I think they're going to pound into Russia, separate the troops, and then they're going to go through. The Russians will. Then like Mariupol. That, that you're just making up words. So Mariupol's now, on the coast, like kind of <laughs> right in the middle. If they were to like pierce oh, the yeah. straight or Mariupol, they would cut and make off it all the, the way to the sea. Yeah, and then and then they won't be able to supply from Crimea anymore. I think that'll happen. And uh, uh, well, I don't know. I, I have I just they had so much success with the last offensive. The Russians don't have the same incentive system. They don't even want to be there. They're not motivated. They're going to retreat like crazy. And then that is going to undermine Putin. And he's going to be more concerned about home than Ukraine. So early in the war, the CIA director flew to Moscow and spoke to his counterpart. Um, and the whole point of the trip was to outline the United States response to tactical nuclear weapons being used in Ukraine proper. Nobody knows what, what they were told. But it seems hmm. to have kind of backed them off that. That hasn't happened yet, thank goodness. Don't you kind of want to see it? No. 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 No, Are you no, crazy? No, 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 hang, on, hang on, stick with me. No, hear me out. Hear me out. Don't you just want to see a little one go off? Yeah, kind of. No. Like, 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 they're like, here's what I want. Here's what I want. <laughs> Biden takes the documents back into whatever his version of Mar a Lago is, uses his force field to declassify them, and then shares them. What, what documents? That whatever classified documents explain this plan, right? I, I just want to know what we what the plan was. I don't need to see it in action. I think you're not getting the reference. The, the attack plan for Iran, uh, there are leaked audio recordings of Trump saying that he oh. has classified attack plan against Iran, and he wishes that he could show them to more people, but they're still classified. That's Okay. 
apparently what the audio says. We're going to I want the plan now. Jesus. It was just a plan. We, kind we of probably have are. a plan for everybody. And uh, I would like, for, there's probably one for Russia. Biden, I mean, declassify it. You got a little dossier on every country that decides they want to they want to sell their shit not on the dollar. We've been in war with Iran <laughs> for a long time. Literally, we yes. Shit up. Ah, Saddam, my friend. I'm going to sell my oil not on the dollar. Ah, He's a madman. Uh, crazy. Never went- <laughs>